Hey guys, Hybrid32494 here with you once again. Today's uh, topic of the day is gonna, going to be electric vehicles uh, and the way that they're rated in terms of economy, cost to drive, and basically it's going to all come down to the MPGE, which is the mile per gallon equivalency. Um, basically what got me into doing a video of this nature was a pop-up ad that came up on Google that was advertising a new Chevy Bolt. Now, the Volt is a pure electric vehicle, uh, starting at, I think, around 39,000. As option, you can get them over 40,000. Of course, there are tax credits involved, and you can get them for as low as 29 at the end of the day, but uh, tax credits are tax credits. You're still paying the upfront cost of an electric vehicle, which is still gonna be in a $40,000 range, uh, not to mention sales taxes and, I guess, any optional equipment that you wanna get. But basically, uh, the Chevy Bolt advertises 119, uh, that's 119 MPGE. Now that sounds fantastic, but really when it comes down to it, uh, there's a lot of factors that at the end of the day, consumers, I, I think, uh, aren't aware of. So 119 MPGE doesn't mean that you're going to be getting, you know, four times better fuel economy, overall cost to drive than, let's say, a Honda Civic. Uh, it doesn't mean that. Really, the numbers they're using are um, a national average of, I think, uh, on a low rate, and they're using about 12 or 13 cents per kilowatt. Now, if you look on your energy bill, uh, you do pay around 12 or 13 cents per kilowatt, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but there's a lot of other costs associated with your kilowatt. Those are just your fixed costs. You also have variable costs and you have taxes and surcharges. I know for a fact, my energy bill, it comes out to over 30 cents per kilowatt. Um, and I live in New York City. So a lot of it is just the actual supply, maintenance, there's taxes. It's never 12 or 13 cents per kilowatt. And if you look at a picture of the window sticker here, I'm gonna put a little insert here of how they actually calculate it. You could for a fact see that, I'm not making this up, they're using 12 or around 13, sometimes 11 cents per kilowatt uh, to calculate these mile per gallon equivalency figures. So what it comes down to is if you're using half of what you actually pay per, per kilowatt, then yeah, you're getting extremely inflated uh, fuel economy numbers. So, you know, let's say you take that 119 divide by two, now you're getting about 60. There's regular hybrid vehicles in the market now that can get 60 miles a gallon. As a matter of fact, my old 2007 Prius sometimes gets 60. You know, and that, that is a Gen 2 Prius. So really a state-of-the-art art type of car, I think, in my opinion. Um, so the Chevy Bolt, coming back to that, really just kind of pissed me off. Uh, so 119 MPGE, and as you could tell, they're using 12 cents per kilowatt. I'm gonna put a little picture here once again to kind of reconfirm that. So what that actually means is um, you're getting, let's say 28 kilowatts per 100 miles, uh, also in the window sticker. So the car uses 28 kilowatts for 100 miles. If you were to do the math on what that would cost you at 12 cents, which is their figure, that would cost you $3.33. Uh, three, I'm sorry, $3.36, same thing basically. But let's now, for instance, suppose that instead of paying 12 cents a kilowatt average, you're, you're actually paying 25, which is what I think uh, most people wind up paying after you know multiple surcharges and variable costs are associated with that. Now it's gonna cost you $7 to drive uh, that same amount. So really, you've already diminished it a substantial amount. Uh, is that fair? No, I don't think so. Should consumers be aware of this? Yes. Um, let's just take a couple more looks at some other things I noticed and I guess uh, dive a little bit deeper into the MPGE numbers themselves and look at a couple of uh, actual graphs and charts and to kind of hit the, hit the point home. So what about the history of electric cars? Now, uh, I, I know that there's been electric cars for a long time, you know, uh, there's been the GM EV1, uh, there's been the Toyota RAV4 EV, as a matter of fact, back in 1996. I've actually seen a couple in my life. There's been a uh, Ford Ranger electric vehicle and a Chevy S10, and those were pretty uh, mainstream type cars you could have bought at the time, of course. The RAV4 EV, I think, retailed uh, around $60,000 in today's uh, time value of money. Um, but here's a little bit of a chart from uh, the internet I was able to source. The GM EV1 had an MPGE rating of 205 miles and a basic four-wheel drive Toyota RAV4 
had an MPGE rating of 143. So you're telling me the Chevy Bolt uh, with 119 is some kind of miracle car? I'm sorry. Even a Tesla Model S uh, is rated 100 MPGE. Uh, that's pretty terrible as a matter of fact. Now, of course, it's a quick car. But one thing to understand is uh, a Tesla buyer is not really an economy car buyer. A person that's buying a Chevy Bolt is looking for, you know, overall low cost uh, t of driving. That's what I'll be looking for. That's what a Toyota Prius buyer is looking for. They're looking for Japanese uh, reliability, dependability, warranty, and just low cost of driving. That's really what it's all about. Uh, so in terms of battery technology development, as you could tell in the last 20 years since the Toyota RAV4 came out, which had lead acid batteries and a higher MPGE rating than a modern electric car. So, you know, for the proponents of electric car technology that say, well, we've come a far, we've come a long way and there's still a long way to go. Well, not really. You know, if anything, it's kind of went uh, slightly backwards just in terms of pure efficiency. Now, of course, the range is much better. Yes, the, the, I guess the weight of the batteries, it's, it's considerably smaller. But just in terms of uh, efficiency, uh, it's backwards, right? All right, so another thing that's really bothering me about just uh, the issues that are common with all electric cars is the charging. So they tell you you could do a you know quick charge, a mega quick charge, who cares? Turbo extra, mega hella quick charge, doesn't matter. The Chevy Bolt itself charges at uh, over 30 amps. So it charges at, let's see, it says 32 amps, and that's a normal charging. That's not even fast charging. Um, I think my house air conditioner, my central air conditioner uses like uh, 30 amps collectively, uses two 15 amp units. Uh, switches. So 32 amps, you're telling me that this basic charger, that the actual included factory charger, not even a fast charger, is using more uh, current than my giant uh, home central air conditioning unit? I mean, that's ridiculous. Can you imagine what the actual fast charger is going to use? Your house won't even be equipped with, with such uh, amp capacity. Uh, needless to say, in the summer, when people have a hard time kind of, you know, with electricity and the supply and demand, uh, how are you going to be charging your electric car? Of course, you could say, oh, sure, we'll get solar panels. But let's face it, can your solar panels, I mean, I don't know the amount of panels you would need uh, in a normal climate, let's say, of the Northeast to, char to generate over 30 amps. It's, it's a huge amount of solar panels you would need. Uh, pretty much it would be cost prohibitive at that point. Now, another thing to consider would be the battery um, retainage. So Tesla themselves have said that basically every year the battery will lose about 5% capacity. So that means in eight years, which is what their battery warranty lasts for, you're guaranteed up for eight years on a Tesla coverage. So in eight years, you will lose 40% of your capacity. Uh, so basically, I, I assume, this is my opinion, uh, basically when you have 40% uh, loss in your pack, the car is undrivable at that point. So basically, your car would have an eight-year lifespan uh, on Tesla's own, um, you know, credits. Now, let's say you have a lower-end manufacturer like Chevy, whoever, I'm not really sure what their capacity drain, uh, well, loss would be. But the fact is, the faster you charge a battery pack, uh, I guess the more of a reaction there is in the internal chemistry of the pack itself uh, and you would have a higher loss over time. So the faster you charge, the more amps you use, the higher the current, um, the lower overall your charge cycles will be. Uh, that's just a fact, that's how it works. Uh, if you look at the battery pack on a Prius, if you do some research, I know for a fact, uh, even when my Prius says it's fully charged, it really is only 60% charged. And when it's fully drained, it's really only 40% fully charged. So it's using a 20% capacity, which is a minimal, minimal amount. So you're never really discharging the battery pack low or, or too high. And that kind of maintains the cycle pretty well. It doesn't uh, release a lot of heat. And the battery chemistry is pretty stable in that uh, well, pack itself. That's kind of what has ensured that the Prius battery pack uh, has such a long life. As a matter of fact, there's been minimal amounts of uh, battery failure in the warranty period, which is 10 to 15 years, depending on what state you're from. So, you know, uh, what do we know about these electric packs uh, that are basically a huge uh, cost of the vehicle themselves? 
you know, it could be 15, 20,000 to replace a, a normal EV battery pack. Now, that's substantial. That might be lost in the value of the car years into the future. I know, let's say for a fact today, if you take a uh, Smart 42 EV, which is the electric drive, you can get those cheaper than the regular gasoline version. <laughs> you know, that's why I bought the gasoline version in the first place, because the EV was a joke. You Not only do you have a 50 mile range at most, but they just have no market value. And guess what? There's no stupid people in the market. Uh, well, you know, there's people that make, let's say, not the best decision, but there are no stupid buyers. And that's how I truly perceive it to be because that's uh, the essence of marketing. You never want your customer to be stupid. Uh, you want them to be well-educated and informed. That way you could appeal to certain senses. Um, of course, maybe they won't know certain, I guess, data and, you know, you, you can get one by. But the average customer is not an idiot, and that's something every manufacturer has to understand. But in my opinion, this whole MPGE thing where they calculate the mileage based on the super low uh, cost per kilowatt, I mean, do they assume the customer is a moron? Because if you do any research and you just look at your electric bill, you'll see that you don't pay anywhere close to that amount collectively. Now, of course, per kilowatt, yes, sometimes you do pay that rate. Um, but collectively, it's almost always over 20 cents. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, if you're watching this video, please let me know in the comments down below what your actual kilowatt rate is. What I want you to do is just look at the kilowatt hours used and just divide that by the total uh, dollar amount that you paid. Uh, rather, take the do total dollar amount on top as your numerator and uh, put the, the, you know, the rest on the bottom there. Just give me your cost per kilowatt. That's what I want to know. Um, if the math is a little wrong, it doesn't matter. Just take those two numbers, divide so you get a relevant number. Um, I'm curious myself. And uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, uh, like, and subscribe. Uh, if there's any kind of more data you wish to know, please let me, let me know. I'll be more than happy to make uh, follow-up videos on the subject.